Hey guys, Daphne Lim, dermatologist. So you'd like to know more about retinol and how it can help your pigmentation. So this video will cover retinol, it will cover certain aspects like vitamin A's as well as tretinoin and what to use. So retinol is an over-the-counter preparation of a vitamin A. In the context of anti-aging, in other words, to prevent or help reduce wrinkles, photo damage, and the general signs of aging, including minimization of pores, retinol is certainly one of my go-to ingredients. In the context of pigmentation, including things like post-inflammatory pigment, but importantly, melasma, I place retinol down the list, and here is why. So first of all, it can improve your skin's turnover. In other words, the cells in the upper part of the skin, known as the epidermis, can turn over higher or faster. So instead of turning over every 28 days, in other words, renew every 28 days, with retinol, there may be a marginal increase in the turnover. In other words, from 28 days, and you get new skin, let's say in about 24 days. It is not as powerful as a prescription retinoid, something like tretinoin, where the skin's turnover can be accelerated by 7 to 10 days. So, first of all, it helps pigment with the cellular turnover. Secondly, it's a very weak, what's known as tyrosinase inhibitor. In other words, it can inhibit the enzyme. Secondly, it's a used pigment, which gives you your post-inflammatory as well as your melasma. Now, in the scheme of things, it's very weak compared to things like your arbutin, your oxalic acid, ascorbic acid, and even prescription um, tretinoin or even things like your hydroquinone. The other thing which retinol can do in the context of melasma, it can help generate the basement mem membrane. In other words, you have the cellular layer, which is your epidermis, the top part of your skin and your dermis. And with melasma, there's thought to be some degree of photo damage. In other words, it's a compromise in the dermal layer of skin, even though your pigment cells are in the upper parts of skin or your epidermis. So what retinol, but most importantly, what retinoids do is that it helps build up the basement membrane layer. It increases the activity of your fibroblasts, in other words, your collagen producing cells. And basically it changes the um, growth factor or cytokine, cytokine production of the fibroblasts which modulates the pigment cells, if that makes sense. So that's the function of retinol. Now, in the scheme of things, like I said, most dermatologists place retinol down the list, certainly as adjunctive therapy, once you can tolerate your more traditional pigment inhibitors. And those pigment inhibitors, which work far better than retinol, include things like ascorbic acid, your L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C, your arbutin, especially alpha arbutin, your azalic acid, which is your as clear, um, they're about between 10 to 20% in concentration. Then obviously the more potent tyrosinase inhibitors, things like your hydroquinone, which is prescribed by dermatologists, as well as your cystamine, which can be bought, like for example, Suspira, 5 to 7%. There are many other pigment inhibitors that work better than retinol. However, if you can tolerate those mainstream pigment inhibitors, certainly you can add retinol to your skincare routine especially if you're looking at anti-aging effects as well.